here uh, in Buller downtown on Paraguay. I'm um, here with Shanky Mike. We're just talking about the uh, the beef industry and in, uh, here in Argentina. And I want to ask him a few questions. Um, it's from ShankyMike.com.ar. Mike, thanks for uh, for meeting with me today. Nice to be with you. So I guess the biggest thing is for, for with tourists to town is that, you know want to meet real people that actually made the made the leap um, and hear about their stories and everything like that. So um, with that being said, I guess to jump right into it is is uh, what brought you here down to Buenos Aires? Well, I, I met my wife who's uh, Porteña uh, ten years ago in uh, Havana, Cuba, and uh, we fell in love and we dated for a year trans hemispherically and uh, after a year we got married we moved to Chicago for about three years and then we, uh, we decided to move to Argentina for uh, a million different reasons but uh, but that's the main reason if I had never met my wife I would never be living here and when when did you move here I moved here in uh, 2003 okay and did you know anyone else when you moved here or no. just your wife just my wife how was your Spanish at that point? Uh, non-existent. <laughs> About uh, a dozen words and a lot of pointing and, uh, and gesticulating, but uh, no Spanish uh, to speak of in those and you, days. And your Spanish now? I think, I'm, I think I'm, I've achieved some degree of fluency. I went to UBA, the University of Buenos Aires here, right after I got here. Uh, I didn't want to be one of those uh, foreigners that had, had lived in a foreign country for years and years and never learned how to speak the language. Perfect. Now, uh, what was the hardest thing about adjusting to Argentine life here versus actually, the States? Actually, I didn't have any problem at all, and I, I think most people that come here don't, don't have much problems. I mean, you know, it's not like moving to India. That would be a, that would be a big adjustment for a United States person. Um, or moving to just about any more exotic. This place is so Western and so European that uh, I can't think of any place on Earth where a, a U.S. person, a shunky, could, uh, could move and have less trouble adjusting. That's my, that's my opinion. Now, tell me about the starting of the business, and tell me about what the business is and, and how you got into it. Well, um, soy ganadero. I, I'm a cattle rancher, and uh, my the ranch has been in my wife's family for uh, about 100 years goes back to the days of Rosas, President Rosas, Indians, and that kind of stuff. But over the over time, it, it had been it, had, it needed some it needed quite a bit of help. And my uh, my uh, mother-in-law uh, never wanted any help from any of the kids in the family. Uh, but as she turned getting getting close to 80 years old, she suddenly needed some help, and then she suddenly asked us, and we were in a position where we could help out and uh, and we were glad we're glad we did so how long have you been in the business uh, I've been here for a little more than six years I've been actively involved in the business for I'd say about five years Perfect. now what's the most difficult part about running the business would you say running running the ranch the most difficult part I think is living in, in downtown Buenos Aires like we do and commuting 300 kilometers deep into the center of Buenos Aires province, um, which, if you don't know, Buenos Aires province is exactly the same size as France, so it's like living on, in the coast of Brittany and driving deep into the center of France every week for a couple of years. Now it's, it's much more under control, so I, we don't go as often. Now, beef is, is obviously a huge part of, of the lure of, of Buenos Aires and Argentina as a whole. Yes. And now you hear a lot of great things about this is the best beef in the world, but you know, tell me, uh, we, we talked a little bit about it, but tell me your insight on, on the beef industry and how it is here in Buenos Aires at this moment. Well, when I first got here, you would have to really look hard to get a, a grain-fed uh, confinement sort of uh, steak from an animal that was raised in that kind of environment. And now it's exactly the opposite. It's... Um, Right now, in, lamentablemente, it's, uh, it's sadly it's a uh, it, it's 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 just the opposite. It's really hard to find a true Ar Argentine grass-fed steak in anywhere in Argentina. Most 
steaks that you eat are from an animal that has been raised at least part of its life, if not most, on grain, the way that uh, animals are, are raised in the United States. So you're saying that the, the, the beef here in Argentina is getting closer and closer to, to like the beef in the States? Yeah, most, uh, most of the time it's indistinguishable from a, from a corn-fed steak from uh, the state of Iowa. Whereas before it, it was completely different? Almost always grass-fed. If the cow had eaten any corn in its life, it would have been rare. And uh, if the cow had ever, ever been in a confinement sort of situation like a feedlot, um, almost, almost impossible. Wow. So the, the, the tradition is really changing, though. that's pretty sad. It, it, it's a sad thing for me because I, on our ranch we still raise them uh, the way Argentines have raised them for 500 years. Do you get a pr better price for your cattle? No, I, I, when we sell our, our cattle it goes into the same place, goes into the same hopper as everybody else's cattle. And uh, it's just that there are fewer, fewer people like me every day. Wow because of the price and everything that goes into it. Yeah, I get the same price as everybody else, even though my beef is absolutely delicious in the way that your grandfather, your great-grandfather would recognize. It's still, I get the same price as stuff that comes from feedlots where cows live and sleep and in their own shit and are injected full of uh, antibiotics to make sure that nobody gets sick.